super happy to see everyone here. 40 people. Whoa. Hello. Hello. Um, I'm Sandra. I am a very active Wikidata volunteer. Um, uh, at this moment, I'm actually working as part of the Open Refine team uh, a little bit. I am now shamelessly plugging a very short lightning talk I'm giving a bit later about Open Refine uh, that we are extending. We are extending Open Refine to also work with Wikimedia Commons. However, this specific presentation or tutorial or whatever it's going to be is really going to be about the core functionalities of Open Refine and the things that people are usually doing with it, which in this community, which is Wikidata editing. Um, just for practical aspects of it, um, I think um, I am actually super happy with taking questions throughout when I am telling stuff. So I actually welcome everyone to just, you know, when you have, when there's something that I'm saying that doesn't make sense or you want a bit further explanation, feel free to open your microphone and shout at me um, or put it in the chat. I have to say that I'm probably a, little, a bit less good at watching the chat because I will also be demonstrating stuff. So bear with me. Um, I will do my best to keep an eye on that. But um, yeah, um, that's it for housekeeping, I think. Um, let me just get started, see if I can share my screen. Everything here is so new. So let's see how that goes. Um, yeah, uh, whoops, share screen sharing, share screen. I don't know how I am supposed to be doing that. Hmm. I am now puzzled because I see this strange thing here. Oh, apparently sharing, are people, no, I don't think so. I'm seeing a slideshow about big blue button itself but i do not see an option to share my uh, monitor or window mm, i don't know whether anyone in technical help can be on the left bottom side with a plus the plus uh there i see start manage presentations is that the one no so, share an external video, select random user. I do not see an option to share a screen or a, a window. Um, I am on a Mac. I don't know whether that's actually... Uh, For me, it was to the right of the webcam. Uh, but yeah. On and off. Screen. Oh, gosh. I'm sorry, people. I am now seeing it. Yeah. Thank you, Vera. And indeed, I am now finding the right one. Yes. I'm sorry for these children's disease hurdles. Uh, here we are. Um, cool. Um, I also, housekeeping thingy, I really have to stop at 55 because I have to rush to another presentation after this. So um, I will try to keep stuff like explanations in as short as possible. Um, I assume people already have heard, of course, about Open Refine. Open Refine is um, a piece of software that is already more than 10 years old. Open source, it started as not open source, but it has become open source and it has been for quite a while now. Um, and I am not going to talk about a way to install it. Um, it's actually quite simple. Uh, open Refine itself has a very clear website, I would say, to which you can go. You have a download uh, link and you can download Open Refine as a piece of like native software on your computer it is available for any platform um, and install installation should be straightforward um, by the way i have also put various links in our etherpad so um, many of the things that i'm going to say here and links that i'm going to talk about are also in there uh, and you can find these as well so installation is kind of painless in in most cases um, and op what OpenRefine does is when you have installed it on your computer, you will double click it usually, and then it will kind of run a little server on your computer and it will open a browser window. Um, this is what's going on here. So what you're looking at here is my Chrome browser with one tab in which OpenRefine is running. Um, and OpenRefine, I call it myself, uh, my pet name for it is um, 
spreadsheets on steroids. Uh, it's actually a very powerful tool to do data cleaning, but you can also do Wikidata batch editing with it, which is uh, really nice and which is what I try to focus on in this explanation here. Um, so um, when you have a data set that you want to work with, you want to ins yeah, import stuff on, on Wikidata, um, uh, OpenRefine is quite powerful in the sense um, that uh, you can actually give it almost any format of data, a CSV, a JSON file, an XML file, RDF, whatever strikes your fancy, an, an Excel sheet, and it will kind of recognize it. It even does wiki text, uh, wiki tables, uh, wiki table syntax. If you go to a wiki Wikipedia page, you take a wiki table, it will uh, also actually understand it. It's kind of smart. Uh, so a quick quick demo of how that goes. It's really simple. Um, yesterday I downloaded a data set of um, World Heritage sites. You are not now not seeing that me, me selecting that on my computer, but uh, now you see it here. World World Heritage sites uh, Excel sheet um, downloaded from the UNESCO the UNESCO website. Oh, it's gone again. No, here we go. Yes, next. And then what in the first step, OpenRefine will kind of do a preview of your file. It will say, oh, what am I looking at here? What is that? Or what are you giving me here? Is that a CSV, whatever? And it will give you a nice preview, which allows you to see if the data looks cool. It's very, it looks very good to me. And then you have all kinds of settings like, you know, with column headers, yes or no. Um, and uh, yeah, if you're happy, you can give it a little name, project name, like World Heritage Sites. You can give it some tags. Um, if you manage a lot of Open Refine projects like I do, it's nice to have tags. You see that I have Open Refine projects on exhibitions, on heritage sites, on Japan, etc. And you create a project. Um, this is just an example of how you start working with Open Refine. I am actually going to demo with an existing project that I've already been working on. It's my pet area of work. I always, when I give uh, OpenRefine tutorials, like what data shall I demonstrate with? What will my audience like? And then I'm like, I will demonstrate with data that I am interested in, <laughs> which is I'm interested in many things, but I'm very fanatic about public art. We have lots of photos of public artworks on commons. We don't have Wikidata items for everything yet. So there's lots of work to do. And um, yeah, um, I have here a data set, which I already refined a lot. I already did a lot of processing um, on it uh, with OpenRefine of uh, a website that is run by a few volunteers on the internet. Loading is a bit slow today. Um, in the meanwhile, I will explain um, a website on, online. Let me give an example here. Um, managed by volunteers. Uh, two gentlemen who travel, especially Europe, and they make photos of public artworks. They have a very cool website, I have to say. It's a little bit old fashioned, like 19, like early 2000s looking web design style, but they have really nicely structured information about public artworks. Focuses mainly on the Netherlands, but they've also traveled to many other countries. So, and we have a, a Wikidata identifier for this website, the Van der Krocht ID or something like that. Um, what I've done is I've at some point I've scraped their website. I've also added it to uh, mix and match, but mix and match is yeah it's fa it's very incomplete. I think in mix and match we only matched like twenty percent, tenish percent, twenty percent. Um, oh hi uh, Antonin, um, ten or twenty percent of of matches that all have already been done, and so many of I think every single sculpture in this website should be on Wikidata at some point. Uh, but it is a, a really huge data set. As you can see, it's 17,000 sculptures. Uh, the two gentlemen have been traveling and taking photos a lot. Um, and um, so uh, what I'm doing now is actually using OpenRefine to work in really small batches per city, per country, if those countries have only been covered very superficially, and do little imports every now and then, whenever I feel like it. And I've done my hometown, Rotterdam. Um, I think some people have already done Utrecht and other cities. And today, I think I want to demonstrate to you uh, the small town of Gouda, uh, known from the cheese, very good cheese in the Netherlands. Uh, it's a small town, not so, far, not so far from Rotterdam. And they also have public art, like so many places. Um, let me show you some basic like features of OpenRefine first. 
So what you see here is a data set that, as I said, I've already been working on it a little bit. You see columns that looks very familiar if you've already worked with spreadsheets, um, with various things. The artists are in here, the occupation of the artist. I did that uh, to help myself a little bit. Um, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you see that I have been taken Taking, so the data set itself, the website itself, uh, the, like the two managers of the website mention the creation dates of the, of the um, sculptures, but their data is not always super clean. Um, so sometimes they have years, but let me see, let me show more rows here. Um, I don't know if I see any examples. Yeah, you can see here, sometimes they have like multiple dates, sometimes they do circa, etc. And I am I have been refining this to actually be single dates so that I can easily add this to, to uh, Wikidata. Uh, so that is one of the things that you can do with OpenRefine. I hope my explanation is not too rambly, is actually take messy data in an original data set and do all sorts of cleaning operations with it. Um, one, one of the things I've done here probably in the past is split this column by slash, make two columns and then make a selection of the year that I want it to be. I usually take the earliest year. Uh, so this column I use as then input for Wikidata edits. Um, what else can I say? Yes, another thing um, is, uh, so the two brothers, it's two brothers who manage this website, also um, have geo coordinates for all the sculptures. It's stored originally, if you scrape the website, it's stored in Google Maps URLs, if I'm not mistaken. And I've extracted the coordinates from that and I've made a column for latitude, I've made a column for longitude. That is also operations that you can easily do with OpenRefine. Sandra, how do you do that? Um, yeah, let me show you some basic features of data cleaning. Um, maybe I first should show you uh, various like selection thingies that you can do on the data. Um, for instance, um, for this tutorial purpose, I already said I want to focus on sculptures from the city of Gouda. Um, so when I look at my data set here, I see that I have a column municipalities, uh, I have a column of provinces of the Netherlands, um, there is also a, col a country column. Um, Let's maybe start with the principle of facets. Um, there's uh, so there's there are very various ways in which you can make the selection of data that you are looking at smaller so that your work gets easier. Or maybe you want to work with you want to do wiki data edits on a, on a subset of data. How do you create such a subset? It's kind of similar to filtering in spreadsheets, but it's more powerful. One of the features that we have is facets. Um, so you have here, um, on top of each column in OpenRefine, you have this little arrow. I hope that's visible for people. People see my mouse here, um, which gives you a drop-down menu. And that drop-down menu is like uh, uh, full of goodies, which I cannot explain in the hour that we have here. Uh, but it's yeah. You, many tutorials online about everything that is in here. I can only show like the tip of the iceberg. Um, I think a design principle, at least that I heard someone say it, and I think I noticed it, is that the most important ones are either at the top or at the bottom, the most frequently used ones. Um, so on the top, you will see facets, and I will again go for the top one, text facets. And what that does, I hope most of you being data nerds will understand what it does, is it creates um, like, a facet. If you are familiar with the concept of faceted search, which you have on e-commerce websites, uh, etc., uh, this is actually what OpenRefine will do for you. Um, so it creates, um, yeah, a facet with the, con the various values that we have for countries. And you can see that uh, they've been to Andorra and they have 20, 28 sculptures there. Um, in the Netherlands, obviously, because the gentlemen are from the Netherlands, we have 9,000 sculptures. Ooh, lots of work to do. Um, you can 
cluster them, you can count, uh, sort them by counts. So what I did now is uh, make the most frequent ones uh, appear on the top. Apparently the second most frequently visit, visited country is Germany and France. Um, you also see the number of choices. This is also something super nice that I sometimes use, like what, you know, what kind of values do I have? Uh, you can export that by itself. Um, I'm just going to filter facets on the Netherlands. So now I have made a sub-selection. You see that I now have this, the 9,000 matching rows uh, for Dutch sculptures. And I can do the same again for municipalities, but I will demonstrate ac actually that you can also do other stuff, which is uh, filtering. Um, I sometimes find the terminology a little bit confusing in the sense that filtering is for me really more like searching. Um, what I'm going to do here is just do a search for, we're going to go for Gouda, Gouda, Gouda. It's pronounced Gouda. So now you can all try at home, say after me, Gouda. Okay. Now it will show me all the municipalities, case insensitive, that have somehow G-O-U in their names. Uh, there's apparently also a village or a town called Scharnagautum. <laughs> Dutch lessons in um, Friesland, in the province of Friesland. We don't want that one. I'm just going to search for Gouda. I could have done also a filter, right? So I could have done, uh, no, uh, a facet, I'm sorry. I could have could have done a facet, for like, give me all the municipality values here, and then I could have clicked on Gouda. But uh, now I've selected Gouda alone through um, filtering. Um, so these are ways to select stuff. Um, so now I have a very nice, neat little subset of 76 uh, statues that I can work with. I like that quantity. It is not overwhelming. I can do some manual stuff with that. Um, um, yes, cheese. <laughs> uh, let me see. I'm just looking at my checklist of things that I want to tell you. Um, yes. Some data cleaning, perhaps. I. I'm not going to go very deeply into that. Um, yeah, I, I already kind of verbally explained that to you. Like, for instance, if we have any cases where you have dates like this, um, I will. There will be various, uh, like, um, for instance, edit column. I will just do a quick demonstration here. Say that I want to extract all the years from all these columns. Um, there are various operations that you can do here. Um, through edit column, let me see, edit cells, edit column. Um, for instance, split into several columns by a separator. Let's say that the brothers have of, very often done 1995-10-23, uh, and I want to split that by year, month, date, then I would, for instance, do this, split this into three columns. Um, you can also do by field lengths, which is quite handy. So you can go for the first four characters of a string, etc. And I think even if you are, no, I'm not going to say that. Uh, but there's, if you are handy in regular expressions and stuff, you can also do crazy stuff with that. So you can split the columns and then create new columns and just continue working with specific columns. Um, mm -hmm. I will actually not go super, super deep into this data cleaning because I really want to focus most of the time on the Wikidata stuff here, because we are here with the Wikidata group. But if in the end we have some time left and people want to see some explanation about that, we can go further. But uh, yeah, I just want to say it's quite powerful. Um, let me just look at my list again. Um, another thing that is super nice, um, uh, let me actually, uh, show that later. I'm just going to do a thing here that I'm not going to explain. Um, okay. I am now throwing away reconciliation data here. Um, I'm sorry, I'm kind of <laughs> uh, doing things a little bit hodgepodge, but um, a very, very powerful and important thing that you want to do when you do Wikidata editing with OpenRefine is you will have a data set that has bits of data, like here in this case, the names of the statues, right? Um, but also we have a column here with the artists, with the creators of the statues. Um, 
at the, as a first step, you will want to look up what all these things are on Wikidata, whether we have Wikidata items for them, and uh, if so, what are their identifiers. You will need that for the Wikidata editing. Um, so, and for that, you use a functionality uh, which is called reconciliation. Reconciliation is a service or an API or whatever um, script code that uh, actually takes strings in your data sets and does some very smart matching with Wikidata and then will uh, look up those values on Wikidata. And if it finds matches with uh, Wikidata items, it will give it to you or it will give you some suggestions of pro probable matches if there are various possible matches. We have 6, 776 values here, which is maybe a bit much. So I am going to even make my subset a bit smaller um, by only going for the 1800s um, uh, sculptures. Eight, how many we have left? Three. That's I like that. Um, I don't know whether we will get good matches, but let's see. I am now going to take this very small subset of sculptures and I'm going to do run reconciliation on the artist names. I know that we already have many, many, many sculptors, Dutch, Dutch sculptures on Wikidata, so I kind of expect that it will return um, like true values. So I do this, start reconciling. I hope that didn't go too fast for people. Um, let me do it again a bit slower. You go here, reconcile. Start reconciling. And uh, I think by default, the Wikidata reconciliation service is already enabled in OpenRefine um, when you will install it. Click that one, English one. I can explain to people also if uh, people are interested in reconciling in different languages how you do that. Um, uh, what the reconciliation service has done now is, it, again, it has kind of looked superficially at, I think, <laughs> at what kind of um, stuff it's looking at here. Um, and it kind of thinks, these look like humans. Um, so do you want to reconcile against humans? And in this case, I think that's a really good guess. So I say, yes, um, human, we, can, we keep it to Q5. And I am going to say, start reconciling. That shouldn't take too long because we have a really small set here. And I'm very curious what it will produce. We have one unknown value, which is interesting. Um, we have no matches. Why is that? I am actually a little bit puzzled with this one. Um, hmm. Maybe we do not have these people on Wikidata. Let me just see. Ah, oh, Antonin, this is not good. <laughs> it should have found this one. Um, so when you have cases where you are actually um, kind of, yeah, let me explain that again. Um, it, in most cases, I would expect this one to actually pro give me already a blue link because there is, um, yeah, there is already a person on Wikidata who um, is called exactly this, uh, but this, this hasn't happened yet. So what you can do is either you will get a few suggestions for people with similar names. Um, often in the case when you have like someone named John Johnson or yeah, a quite commonly used name, then you will get uh, the, the reconciliation service will give you a list of, yeah, sometimes a dozen suggestions. And then you can check mouse over each of them and see which one actually matches the one that you want to have. Um, but at alternatively, you can also do a little search on Wikidata and let it match here. Um, so in this case, I'm doing this. With the unknown one, that is actually, uh, in terms of data modeling, we need to model that with a known value. And that is something that, as far as I know, um, OpenRefine does not uh, support yet. Um, and then this Mr. Strake, I actually looked it up. So his name is written kind of interestingly by the brothers van der Krocht. They abbreviated his first name. And I do suspect that we do not have this kind of spelling as an alias or as uh, a label on Wikidata. Although I did check Wikidata uh, just now in preparation for the workshop and I know that we have him. So I am gonna look up uh, 
строки. А -а -а. Again, I put the right accent to be in here somewhere. I saw him. Here he is. Oh, Xavierius. Yes, of course. Um, this is the gentleman that we want to have. You can also uh, do lookups like this by hand. This is, of course, time consuming, and this is actually where you hope that the reconciliation service serves, uh, saves you time. Search for, mac for match and I will enter um, his QID and we have the match here. I hope that makes sense for people. Um, I do not see any questions in the chat so far. Uh, so this is reconciliation. We can do the same for the names of the statues, for the statues themselves. Um, let me see, I can actually make a bigger selection here. And I could equally run the reconciliation service. I will not actually let it run here, um, because that's probably going to take too long. Uh, and in this case, I'm going to use the Dutch one. Um, Oh, I do think I remember that the reconciliation service was offline just a second ago. Um, uh, perfect, fantastic. Um, so if you want to use reconciliation service, the Wikidata reconciliation service in another language, and I also put that in the, in the notes in the Etherpad, um, what you do is you take this URL, copy link address, and you go to your, uh, yeah, you say reconcile at standard service. I already have it in Dutch and in Japanese. At standard service, and you can say, for instance, let's do German, and you change the EN to the E, and then you will also uh, have a reconciliation service in German. Now, this doesn't make sense because I have Dutch labels here, um, but just to show you that you have an option to do that. Uh, so that is actually also what you do for non-English languages. Um, so that is what I demonstrated just now. Um, so yeah, for any language code that is supported by Wikidata labels, um, you can do the same principle. The use values as identifiers functions. Use values as identifiers. Uh, where is that again? Mm. I am drawing a little bit of a blank here, Nicola. Um, I might not be super familiar. Yeah, where is it again? Is it in? Um, what was the column? Oh, do I ever use that one? <laughs> Let's try what it does. I'm actually really drawing a blank. I'm. Let's try with the country column because that is reckon reconcile use values as identifiers. Okay. Interesting. Okay. So Pintosh says, it is a function you can use when you have a column of QIDs and want to turn it into a reconciled column without calling the reconciliation service. Okay, I see. Yes, just for the sake of the recording, so that people who watch the recording afterwards. It is something that I personally have never used yet, but um, in this case, it did nonsense. In what case would it not do nonsense? Um, Yes, I want to undo my last operation indeed because it doesn't make sense, that operation. And that is a good occasion to demonstrate the undo feature, which is also super nice about OpenRefine. Um, you can actually experiment and do crazy and dumb things to your heart's content. And you can undo all your pointless things, which is for me very good because I do pointless things all the time. And so what I did just now is if I am not mistaken, I undid this last step and 
by going to the undo redo column uh, tab and you can go to any step that you have done before you see that i've already worked very hard on this data set i already did 1200 operations on this i've worked on this for months so it is really a hobby set of mine um i now just undid this last step and uh if all is well it should undo the last thing i did i hope um how would you retrieve labels in another language from Wikidata? That is also a very good question, which I actually also never do. I'm actually the wrong person doing <laughs> giving this tutorial because sometimes I have no clue. Um, yes, Vera, let's see. Uh, let us see if we can do that. Um, would that be at column from reconciled values? I guess so. That's just properties, right? Yeah. Hmm. Wow. Amazing. I'm learning new things. So what I, I hope people followed what I did here. I will actually redo this because it's really educational um, and actually quite important feature. So it's really good to demonstrate this. Um, say you have a data set with, in which you have, let's say we, re we reconciled uh, some people here, artists, right? Let me just filter it to um, uh, by judgment, just take the ones that we reconciled, which is, let me see how many we have. Two matches. Uh, let's say that I want to double check whether these are indeed sculptors. Um, I use case would be that I have a very big data set with thousands of names and I run the reconciliation service over it. Um, and um, it's returned many, many matches. So that has gone quite well, but I'm not like a thousand percent confident that every match will indeed be a sculptor. It could be someone with the same name. So I will uh, actually do a double check here. What I will do then is edit column, um, add columns from reconciled values. And then you can uh, actually say things like, give me a new column based on the reconciled column with just the, with the occupation of these people. So I select occupation. And then it will say here, oh, this is what I'm going to show you. But then I just also learned that you can do labels. So I will do the yeah, Japanese labels. Probably there are no Japanese labels for these uh, lovely people. Oh, it's thinking so deeply. Have I been doing something wrong? No, I haven't. But we also may have labels in English and that is quite likely. Um, what I'm saying here is, hey, Open Refine, give me new columns, uh, a column for occupation, a column for a uh, Japanese label, which will be empty, and a column for English label. And it's, hmm. Here we are. Answering questions in Etherpads. I love that. Thank you, people. This is why we're here together. Ta-da, here we are. So you now also have the English labels. Uh, we're talking about people, so of course the labels will not be different, but if you have you know, other items, entities for which your labels are valuable and you want to have them in different languages, it's super handy. I'm gonna click OK. And now we are doing data extension, as uh, it is called which apparently takes some time to do, 100%. And ta-da, in a few seconds, we will have extra columns. I hope that makes sense. Uh, I hope I answered someone's question here. Um, I'm looking at the time, which looks good to me. Um, I can now actually proceed. Let me look again at my list of things I wanted to demonstrate. I can show how you would then do batch Wikidata editing. Um, that is 
the, the thing why I use OpenRefine most of the time is because I want to get external data into Wikidata. I am not a coder. Uh, I don't run scripts or bots. And um, yeah, uh, how we do that is by using the Wikidata extension. Um, here on the top right, you have extensions column with a menu Wikidata. First, you go to edit Wikidata schema, and I will actually remove this one because it's an old one that I've been making. I will start fresh. Um, this is what it will look like for you when you, you know, you've been cleaning your first your data set. You've been doing some reconciliation. You will see, uh, like, uh, I don't know, a little how do you call these interface thingies, little cards tags for each column that you have in your data set. Some of them will have a green line under them, which means that they have been reconciled um, and others will not be because they might just be strings of text, etc. And what you can do here is actually create a schema and the schema is basically just an imitation of what your Wikidata edit will look like. Um, so what I want to do is in this case, I'm just going to go back to my data set. Let's assume, right, that these are two uh, sculptures. One of them is from two gentlemen here, and one of them is a tile tableau. It's a tile artwork. Uh, let's say I want to create new Wikidata items for them. So I'm going to the schema here. You can also go to your schema by clicking this link here. Um, and what I am going to do is I'm going to take the title column, which we have here, as the new thing I want to create. Let me see. So, the, oh no, title original is the name of the column that I want to use because that, well, that one has values in it. Am I doing it right? Let's see. Mm. Yeah. yeah, this looks good. And um, so then uh, the schema editor or however you want to call it asks you to add some terms. This is actually basically mimicking what you want to go in the term box. So in the labels, descriptions, or aliases box on top of your Wikidata item and to add some statements to it. Um, so what I'm gonna do here is in my original title, I already have Dutch labels for the works, right? I might have columns also with the English label if it would be translated in this case, I do not. Um, but what I'm gonna do is say, so my label is gonna be in the language Dutch, Netherlands, and I am again gonna drag this column here because the value that I have in that column, I want to end up and I want it to end up in the label. And I also have columns prepared through my data cleaning that I did earlier for descriptions for um, Wikidata descriptions for these uh, sculptures. I created English descriptions. I have created Dutch descriptions. So I'm going to tell the schema, use these. Um, description, Dutch, and I'm going to drag my Dutch description thing here, and description English. English, and you could very well imagine that I also may have been super diligent and I might have had aliases for all these works, uh, labels in other languages. But so far, that's what I have in my data set and that's what I'm going to use. So all the new items that will be created, the new Wikidata items that will be created, will get the Dutch label from that data set that I have, will get a Dutch description and an English description, which I think is nice. Um, and then I'm going to add statements. Um, let's say, um, I'm just gonna, yeah, you pretend like you're editing your Wikidata item, but this is ju just like the a schema for like how every item newly created or edited item will look like. Uh, of course, we want instance of, um, instance of, ha, huh, that's a good one. Uh, it is a data set of sculptures, but you saw that in the example that I have here, there's also a tile tableau. So it's, ma it's mainly public artworks. So I'm gonna call it work of arts which is a little bit generic, um, but I could do, and I'm thinking out loud here is do some filtering of my data set again to actually make a subset of everything that has tiles in it. 
Um, I have birds on my balcony. I'm very happy. Um, and I could make a set that has tiles in the, in the title or that has uh, sculptures in the title. And then I'm qu quite certain that I can do these specific instances of, if you understand what I mean. But in this case, I'm, I'm working with a diverse set and I'm giving it a broader name. Um, usually I would go for the most specific uh, instance that I can do. Um, let us say that, of course, all of them are located in the, uh, located in the, administrative territorial entity of Gouda, which is here our reconciled municipality. Um, they are all in the country, the Netherlands. I'm not going to make this uh, a complete schema, it's just for demonstration purposes, but you want to make this as complete as you can. Um, creator artists. There we go. Oh. And we can add other things like geo coordinates, etc. Now, uh, here on top, you see, we have a little link that link that says issues and it tells me Sandra, there's some stuff going on with your schema. Um, so, Sandra? Yes, Andy, yes. You said you could do the coordinates, but you have two properties in your data, one for longitude and one for latitude. Yes. Can you show us how you would combine those, please? Ah, I can do that. Yes. Let me do that. Jumping back and forth. Um, I will actually go to the entire data set. Let me see. So um, I will actually remove all my kind of filters that I will do by combining two columns values. I actually don't know. I had the column already coordinates. It's been a while since I've looked at this data set. I think I did already did it for a subset. Um, now let me just filter for uh, the Netherlands. Let me just, or maybe Maybe do it with Belgium text filter. Uh, hmm, interesting. Oh, yeah, Belgium. Yeah, here we are, Belgian sculptures. So here we have a column latitude, longitude. Uh, we actually wanted formatting for. Wikidata input to be latitude, comma, longitude. I think with no space in between. I am a bit rusty on this one. So what I'm going to do here is um, edit column. Mm. One columns I never use that one. Add column based on this column. Uh, so the, by default, it will tell you, oh, your new column that you do based on this column, do you want it to, to be the same value? Sometimes that's quite helpful. I do that because then I want to use my new column to do all sorts of cleaning with it without throwing away my old column. But in this case, I want to combine the values of two columns. And for that, you use uh, you can use uh, an easy scripting language, which is called GREL, G-R-E-L. Um, Lots of documentation about it online. I'm actually not a scripter, so I always Google, you know, how do I combine two columns, etc. in Open Refine, and I find my Grel, um, uh, yeah, my Grel syntax that I need. Um, let me see if I have one in my history that I can just super easily reuse. I'm gonna reuse this one. Um, my columns are named, let and long, so. Uh, so now, um, and I'm going to replace this with the comma. So this is uh, the syntax that I'm using. It basically says, take the whatever is in uh, the latitude column, put the comma, and then whatever is in the longitude column. And this is a little yeah, bit of growl uh, script. I'm going to say, okay. Um, 
of course, giving this new column a name. Giving it a demo label. This is actually a copy of an existing project that I have that I'm now playing with. It's not my uh, canonical project that I'm ruining. Um, and tada, we have a coordinates column now. So I can actually now, thanks to uh, Andy's excellent question, go back to our schema. If I did not make any mistakes, um, and say. I also want uh, to add the coordinates here. Let me see, add statements, um, coordinate location, and I will add any value that I have here. I have so many issues now, why is that? It's funny. It's really interesting. I see that you folks see my issues and I don't see that on my own screen. I am now very puzzled. Ah, coordinate location added more than once on the same item. That's quite possible indeed. And we'll batch create new weak data items. But it also complains that our statements without references and being good Wikidata citizens, of course, we want to add references as well. Um, the nice thing is every bit of information that I took here maybe except for the instance of which I kind of, you know, figured out myself, is coming from this lovely website by the Van der Krocht brothers. So I can add that URL as a reference. Um, so I'm going to say reference URL. Um, based in the external URL. It's A, which is... One uh, October thirty, and I can also copy this reference and paste it in other statements, which is really nice. So you don't have to retype this. Last thing I'm going to show is a little preview. That's um, your um, schema will uh, give you. Here you can actually check what uh, your edits will look like. And this is super nice. Uh, this is actually super helpful to have. Um, so you, I can I can actually, actually check, oh, we are creating a new item here. It will have this Dutch label, this, this English description, Dutch description looks quite good. I'm now looking at a subset of Belgian sculptures, uh, by the way, because I, I filtered differently just now. Um, this all looks quite nice to me. Wow, the coordinates look amazing. <laughs> so they're already here converted to the uh, like the decrease uh, notation. This looks good to me. So suppose that I indeed want to do these Wikidata edits. Um, then I go here and then I can do one of two things. I can either directly upload my edits to Wikidata and then it will, yeah, OpenReFi will present me with um, a little window in which I enter my own credentials and then I do the edit directly. I'm not going to do that. Um, I could do it, of course, if I, if the stuff I just did as a demonstration actually made sense, which uh, I'm not confident that it did. But you can also export it to quick statements. And that's actually something that I do a lot. Why? Um, Actually, Chauvin and I also talked about it yesterday. <laughs> uh, both have a little bit of a different behavior and Antonin knows be much better than I do where the difference lies. But in my experience, um, if you export to quick statements and you do the edits through quick statements, it will less easily create duplicate statements. It will kind of add existing stuff to statements, like if you do qualifiers, etc. While my impression is, and I don't know really super exactly, um, ask Antonia again, uh, is that OpenRefine itself tends to do duplicate stuff sometimes. So I usually play safe and export to quick statements. And what it does now is actually, uh, as you can see here, um, I will have, yeah, I cannot show it to you because it's in a different window, but I will have a little text-based export here Maybe I can just drag it in here. Um, let me see. Yeah, here we are. 
Um, that is quick statement syntax, and I can paste that in quick statements and do my edits from there. Um, I see that we are at 11.50, and I think I want to keep it at this for the demo explanation. It was a little bit messier than I hoped it would be, um, but I do hope that it made sense to people. Um, I'm now totally open for questions and explanations, and if people want to, you know, open their microphones and say things or ask things, also super fine to do that. Um, anything that people still want an explanation about that, you know, you looked at while I was demonstrating things, but I didn't really explain a lot, and you want to hear more about, or anything else. Um, if I wrongly added one entity which is already there in Wikidata, then what happens? Yeah, you've just created a, a duplicate entry. Um, I would say, uh, just like any other batch tool, uh, OpenRefine is not smart enough to notice that you are creating duplicate items, so you really have to be careful, like with any tool, that you make sure that you are not creating duplicate items, make sure that the reconciliation you do before is thorough. I always take a lot of time with the reconciliation that I do. This is why, for instance, with this data set, I only do it in small batches. I only do city per city so that I can do really careful reconciliation, like do we indeed or not yet have a, an item for this sculpture, for this sculpture? Um, yeah, um, I hope that answers your question. So. Um, Sandra, do you re recommend start using one recon reconciliation service in English followed by another language reconciliation service? Yes, um, my impression, so my native language is Dutch and I usually actually use the English reconciliation service all of the time because I have the impression that it, even if you use English, it will also do kind of correct reconciliation with other languages, but it, I would say it's probably some trial and error. Um, yeah. Try and, and undo, as, as I demonstrated, you can undo stuff and try again with another other language reconciliation service to see how your results are different. Um, as I said, my impression is that the English one already is quite powerful and does good stuff. And what would you call a small batch? Um, whatever doesn't make me cry to do by hand. Uh, what does that mean? Um, I try to work maybe on a batch of maybe 100, maybe maximum 200 things at the same time. If I really want to, to be super careful, you know, with editing and this like sculpture stuff is, is something I really care about. I want to do it right. So uh, I will sit down at my computer in the evening and say, okay, I can maybe tonight do 20 or 50 or 100 or 200 but not more. So I will always split up my batch into smaller bits to make that possible. And also to, you know, make it possible for myself to at some point finish something. Um, like I think doing my own city where I live, Rotterdam has taken me probably a month or more to actually do it right uh, in smaller sub batches. Um, yeah. <laughs> Nicola calls 5,000 small, but then it's probably really messy, Nicola. You add a lot of garbage. <laughs> no, I'm teasing you here. Um, yeah, um, I don't understand what reconcil reconciling with um, something means. Uh, is a question by Toby, 99 of 9. Say for VF, is it going to check the labels in my column against the labels in VF? Yes. I think so, yes, indeed. So if you would use the VF reconciliation service, uh, there is not just the Wikidata reconciliation service, but also now the Commons one, shameless plug for presentation later today, uh, but also for VF, for the Getty vocabularies, for many, many other vocabularies. Um, it will indeed um, yeah, check those data sets and compare labels and say, oh, this person that you have here in your data set is probably the same as this author in the VF database based on the similarities of labels. I hope that makes sense. Um, are these different algorithms? I think that's maybe more something for Antonin to answer because he is the like king of the emperor of reconciliation. Um, let me see. Uh, do I still have this open? Where's the workbench link again? I always forget where it is. Yes, thank you so much. Um,
I don't think these are different algorithms because they also have different developers, I would say. Yeah. I am doing a time check here uh, in my own interest because I have to move to another session. Um, but I do hope for everyone that this has been helpful. Um, I will definitely still hang around at the conference. So if there's any question that you may have, uh, feel free to uh, send me a message on the chat. Um, and um, this a few in, in an hour and a half approximately, there will also be a short lightning talk um, about in the SDC session about um, new functionality that we are developing for OpenRefine, which is making it possible to edit structured data on commons. Yay. Uh, I can already say that we are not giving like spectacular announcements about that yet because we've just started developments. But if people are interested in that, uh, you can join there as well. Um, thanks for being here. And um, just nice to have you. In the meanwhile, 50 people, it's super nice. Um, I would say have a good rest of your day and um, see you in the chats and everywhere and in the sessions. <laughs>